Expect the unexpected when you're sailing with Disney Cruise Line, because these ships are full of surprises, both good and sometimes stressful. Hey everybody, it's AJ for Disney Food Blog. Setting sail aboard a Disney cruise ship is over the top exciting. I've got a couple cruises coming up and I cannot wait. But along with your all-inclusive meals and deck parties and overseas excursions, you're also gonna run into some things during your time at sea that'll make you go, hold up, I didn't know about that. So today we're sailing the seven seas with you to point out the good, the bad, and the confusing that you're gonna find on any of the Disney Cruise Line ships. That way you'll know what to prepare before you embark. And ahoy, what's that I spy up yonder? I don't even know if that works. It's a QR code. Scan that QR code that you see on the screen right now to download our free Disney Cruise Line packing checklist. You can also download the same list by going to DisneyFoodBlog.com slash cruise packing. All right, we're gonna start with the big stuff you'll run into weeks before you board the ship. Online check-in can be complicated. Much like a Disney hotel room, you can check into your DCL stateroom early via your free Disney Cruise Line Navigator app. A check-in button will pop up for you starting at midnight 30 days out from your cruise, as long as your cruise is all paid up before that time. Now, you don't have to check in right then and there, but you're gonna want to because the sooner you check into your stateroom, the earlier you'll be able to get on the ship, which means you can start right away on the all-inclusive dining and maybe even get some water slide and coaster rides in before the lines start getting too long. But checking into your room isn't as easy as pressing a button and calling it good. It is much more extensive than that. For online check-in, you'll need to fill out a few forms and submit the following things. First, every traveler's passport. If you're taking a picture of a passport card, you'll need to submit both the front and back side of the ID. You'll also need a clear photo of each passenger by themselves. And we're talking no background, no graphic tees, just all face and shoulders. And make sure you don't accidentally crop the picture where any part of your face is cut off. Because even if a little sliver of forehead isn't showing, they're gonna make you resubmit a new photo. You're also gonna need your credit card info. Any additional purchases you make aboard the ship or on Disney's private island, Castaway Key, will be directly charged to the card you put on file when you check in. Nope, no cash purchases on the ships. It's all charge, baby. But but it's still important to have some cash slash region appropriate currency on hand for any of those other overseas ports of call you might be making a pit stop in like New Zealand or the British Isles or the Norwegian fjords, you know, wherever you're going. I had a horrible time in the Bahamas trying to get money out of an ATM. My bank was not having it and I ended up having to borrow cash from somebody. It was not cool. Now, if you're flying to the port or planning to stay in a nearby hotel before or after your cruise, DCL does ask for that information too, so have that handy as well. Now, once everything is submitted correctly, you'll be able to choose your port arrival time. That's when things really start to feel real y'all so get hyped now i will say thank goodness you no longer have to have your covid test before you get on the ship that was super stressful another thing that might surprise dcl guests the more you cruise the better off you'll be okay even if you're already familiar with the castaway club you're still gonna want to know about the most recent updates that have happened with this membership but first, let's talk about what a Castaway Club is. Much like how other cruise line loyalty programs work, Disney likes to reward their guests with more benefits the more they sail. So just as soon as you take your first cruise, congratulations, you're automatically part of the Castaway Club. Now, don't you feel special? There are four tiers to the Castaway Club membership. First is silver for those who book two to five sailings. Gold is six to 10 sailings. Platinum is 11 to 25 sailings. And then there's the brand new Pearl tier for those who've sailed 26 plus times with Disney. I'm not in that tier. Why do these tiers matter though? Well, because they determine how early you can start booking those different premium cruise activities like Castaway Key excursions, fancy dining reservations, mixology classes, spa services, specialty princess meet and greets, cabana rentals, cha-ching, etc. Now for your first cruise, you'll be able to book activities 75 days prior to sailing. And for several of these, that should still give you plenty of time to secure those reservations. But those who've sailed with Disney before will get first dibs on the extras. Silver members can book 90 days out, gold members 105 days out, platinum members can book 120 days out, and pearl members can book 123 days out. Three big days for you pearl members. Or you can cheat a little and book a concierge level stateroom where a concierge cast member will book any of those activities for you 130 days out instead, regardless of your membership status. It's probably one of the only ways you're gonna get a cabana. 
The things that'll book up quickest on the ships are the Royal Court Tea Party, which is offered on every cruise except for the Disney Wish, and lets your family enjoy a spot of tea and entrees alongside several Disney princesses. Kids also get a royal assortment of gifts and goodies at the end of their meal, too. Also, booking up quickly the beverage tastings and mixology seminars. So for all sorts of spirits, including but not limited to tequila and margarita tastings, chocolate and liqueur tasting, and wine tastings. And the most coveted of them all, those Castaway Key Cabanas. Disney even admits on their website that booking a private family beach cabana on Castaway Key can be rough going. And that's because these cabanas aren't just swanky looking, but they're also very limited in quantity. Beach cabanas can be pricey, ranging around $399 to $1,300, depending on the style you book. But if you get a chance to purchase one, you'll have your own personal space with private beach access, rental items at your disposal, and all-day concierge services. Okay, this next one is probably the worst part about cruises for me, the elevators. You've only got two ways to get from floor to floor on the ships, and that's by stairs or that elevator, or by slide if you're at the Oceaneers Club on the Disney Wish and you're trying to get from deck three to deck two, but that's just for fun. Now, the stairs may not sound like a bad idea, but if you're trying to make your way up 10 flights, these will more than likely get you winded if you haven't mastered the stair climber at your gym back home. The easier option sounds like the elevators, but be warned, elevators can get packed, especially after a stage show, right before dinner, or when a deck party is about to take place. Now, on ships like the Disney Dream, the Wonder, the Fantasy, and Magic, you've got three banks of elevators, and I think the ones forward and after are usually going to be a little bit less crowded. But for the Wish, you don't have the central elevators to rely on. You've only got elevators in forward and aft. So sometimes it's helpful to go have these on the stairs and elevators. You walk down a few flights, then you try one of the elevators on a lower floor instead. But more than likely, you'll still be running into the crowds from a few floors above. You might not always be able to get ahead of the elevator crowds, but it's important to look at your itinerary on the Navigator app and plan around them as best you can, either by heading to a show or dinner with 10 to 15 minutes to spare or by hanging out a bit after a show to let the crowds die down a little bit. And if you want to avoid them all together and you're still looking to get your steps in for the day, then the stairs are still right there when you need them. Okay, this is something else that really surprised me, I guess. Not every kid is going to be thrilled to go to the Oceaneer Club. Okay, so what happens when one of the most magical parts of your cruise doesn't turn out to be all that magical? A big selling point of Disney cruises is that there's something for everybody. You've got adults only fancy dining opportunities. You've got pools and spas and lounges. You've got tween and teen only hangouts and activities. And you've got that kids only Oceaneer Club for ages 3 to 12. The Oceaneer Club is available on all five ships, and depending on what ship you're sailing on, kids will be able to immerse themselves in different magical lands, create fun crafts, meet with favorite characters, and hopefully make a new friend or two. And it's all included in the price of your stateroom. So everybody always tells you, oh, I never saw my kids for the whole cruise. They were at the Oceaneer Club the whole time. It was wonderful. I could just relax. And some kiddos won't be able to get enough of the Oceaneer Club, but others might find it nerve-wracking to leave their parents behind for hours, especially if they're going at it alone without a sibling. So talk to your kids about how these Oceaneer Clubs work before you book your cruise. That way they're not totally shocked by the fact that mom and dad won't be able to join them while they battle alongside the Avengers or train to be a Jedi like their father before them. It's also why going to the Oceaneer Club open house is important. Open house happens on embarkation day before you set sail, as well as on a few other days when you're already out at sea. Those other open house days will vary, but you should be able to track them down on the Navigator app schedule. Open house is the only time grown-ups and teens will be able to see the Oceaneer Club, and it also lets kids get a feel for this space with their family in tow first, just so they can ease into the idea of playing here for hours on end later instead of being thrown into the fun head first and potentially getting overstimulated and scared by it all. Even if your kid still isn't sold on the Oceaneer Club after open house, there'll still be tons for them to do during the day, like hang out in the pools, watch deck movies, play trivia games, take sketch classes, meet characters, and of course, eat all the ice cream they can possibly stomach. Now, here's kind of an interesting little tip about things that shock DCL guests. When you first board a Disney cruise ship, you might think, good grief, I booked a cruise to get away from all the people? Is that really gonna be the case here? because when you're waiting to board, you're gonna be waiting with a sea of everyone else. Now, there are times when the ship feels shoulder to shoulder packed, and those are the times that I mentioned earlier. So after the stage shows, right before meals, when a deck party's about to take place, 
but at other times the ship could feel completely deserted. This is when I found the ships to be their least busy and active. First, when you're at an overseas port of call. More than likely, you're going to want to debark at these overseas destinations too and check things out, but you can always go later or return earlier to experience the lounges and activities with fewer other guests. Just keep in mind that cruise gift shops will not be open when your ship's at port. That's another thing that shocks people, by the way. The next time the ship can feel empty is during those witching hours. Even when the parties have died down, the food stalls have closed, and most other guests are sleeping soundly to the rocking of the waves, you're more than welcome to explore the ship whenever you want, even if that means you're lounging in a chair at 2 a.m. or having your own deck dance party at 3.35 a.m. Night Owls might even be able to catch an 11 p.m. showing of a brand new or classic Disney film in one of the ship's theaters or on the deck's projector screen. The next time you can find nearly nobody about is very early. Most of the pools on the Disney cruises open for the day at 8 a.m., and that includes the adults-only quiet cove area, too. So if you want to swim while other people are either getting ready for breakfast or still silently slumbering away, you could potentially have these pools all to yourself. Now let's talk Castaway Key, shall we? Sorry to rain on your parade or your private island getaway, but Castaway Key isn't sunshiny all the time. Last time one of our team members was at Castaway Key, it was kind of gross outside. Not cold, though it can get cold in the Bahamas too, but rather drizzly and windy and was majorly overcast all day long. So they ended up boarding the ship an hour earlier because the rain started to come in real heavy and they just decided to throw in the beach towel. When the weather is acting up, Castaway Key excursions that you booked ahead of time could very well be canceled and refunded, which is super disappointing, but it's better to keep everyone safe rather than brave the storms. So what can you do when it's pouring on Castaway Key? Well, first and foremost, don't give up hope just yet. Even if the day starts out kinda icky, the storm could very well clear up and be A-OK -okay by the time you eat breakfast and change into your swimsuit or it could work vice versa. Maybe the beginning of your day starts off looking pretty, but by the end of it, things are starting to look gray. Either way, make sure to keep things flexible. You will have all day to explore after all, so even if there's a patch of bad weather, there's a good chance you'll be able to salvage the rest of your island day, much like you can after an afternoon storm passes through Disney World. For the most part, Castaway Key won't cancel excursions for smaller showers, and you'll still be able to enjoy the beaches and snorkeling underneath those moody little rain clouds. But if the storms are starting to get iffy, you can always take that opportunity to look around at the Castaway Key gift shops or eat at Cookies or Cookies 2, which, ta-da, is also included with the price of your stateroom. And if the storm get really bad, then hop back on board as soon as you can. But fair warning, the ship is absolutely freezing when you first step back in it all soaked, so consider taking a hoodie or jacket with you just in case. Every now and then, a storm might be too intense and the ship won't be able to dock at Castaway Key at all. Again, it's a major bummer, and the whole crew knows that too. However, you won't just have to sit around on the boat and do nothing in your stateroom all day, because activities, crafts, trivia, games, meet and greets, movies, you name it, will still be happening on board the ship, rain or shine. Just make sure to check your navigator app and heart the activities you'd like to prioritize. All right, next we're going to talk about freedom, that sweet foodie freedom. When you pay for a stateroom aboard a Disney cruise, you're also prepaying for all your meals on the ship, aside from a few outlier instances that I'm going to talk about more next. Yep, so your stateroom payment includes the ship's kind of food court, the quick service locations on the pool deck, and the rotational dining, which basically means you'll be rotated through three different sit-down restaurants each evening. And once you have those all paid for, then the power of how you experience each meal rests in your hands. While traditionally, rotating dining sets you up for a three-course meal with appetizers, entrees, and desserts for you to choose from, you are more than welcome to mix and match however you want. So if you want to order two entrees, order two entrees. Want an extra appetizer instead of dessert? Great, order the extra app. Want your meal to consist of all appetizers? Then what are you waiting for? Go for it. You can even order something completely different after you've already received your meal, if you decide you want to have something else too. Since your server will rotate with you for each and every dinner, they'll get to know you real well, so let them know about any changes you want to make to your orders and they'll be happy to help you out. Now, before you get too excited about the all-inclusive dining, let me warn you about a few things that aren't included in your stateroom price, okay? If you pick up a snack from the concession stand in front of the stage show theater, like a box of popcorn, for instance, those snacks are going to be charged to your stateroom unless you're staying in a concierge-level stateroom. Then you can pick up as much popcorn as you want. 
Now, if you and your family are big popcorn fans and plan on munching on boxes full of that buttery stuff during each stage show, then you might want to consider purchasing a refillable popcorn bucket for around $7 to $9. That way, you'll be able to keep refilling for the remainder of your cruise. Want to play around a bingo on board? You can purchase cans of soda or alcoholic drinks in the lounges where these games are taking place. And speaking of alcoholic drinks, all alcoholic beverages will cost you extra. Doesn't matter whether you're ordering them at a super swanky lounge or if a crew member swings by and offers you one on a platter while you're sitting back relaxing in the adults only area. These all cost money. Now, if you're planning on cruising in 2023 and want to take part in the uh, toasting ceremony on the final evening of the cruise, you might be able to get a free glass of bubbly at that, but otherwise, everything's going to cost you if it's alcoholic. Now, there are non-alcoholic beverages available for you to pick up too at the toasting event so everyone can participate. Also, any appetizers and bites that you order from the lounges will also cost you extra to enjoy, and so will specialty coffees from the coffee bars if you're wanting a caffeinated beverage that's more than just plain old black coffee. While desserts are offered at every meal, you can purchase specialty desserts from your ship's designated sweet shop if it has one. You can even order an over-the-top sundae and have it delivered to your table during your rotational dining meal so that everyone can stare at you while you eat it all jealous-like. Now remember, those are only going to be on the ships that do have an extra candy store on board. Now, delivering the sundae isn't going to cost anything extra, but the sundae itself will put you back around $13 plus. And finally, we got to mention the adults-only dining you could potentially splurge on. Every Disney cruise has at least one premium dining option that you can add to your events list. So these premium dining options like Palo or Palo Steakhouse or Enchante or Remy, it all depends on what cruise ship you're on, serve up high quality food, drinks, and desserts in romantic settings. So if you want to have a classy date night with your loved one while dining on Northern Italian cuisine or French fare, then you'll need to make an advanced dining reservation for these restaurants ahead of time. Just make sure to head to guest services as soon as you embark to let a cast member know if you'd like to replace a dinner that you don't want to go to or if you want to have two dinners that night because believe it or not you can now depending on the cruise you might also be able to book a fancy brunch instead meaning you wouldn't have to give up any rotational dinners whatsoever or eat two dinners which i don't see a problem with i do it all the time on cruises <laughs> but then again that's my job now, there may come a time when you don't book a premium dinner on a Disney cruise and then regret that choice as soon as you arrive. As it turns out, you'll still have one last chance to get a reservation before the ship sets sail, so make it count. As soon as you board, go straight to the adults-only restaurant featured on your ship and ask the host standing out front if you can put your name on a first-come, first-served wait list. Now, this strategy doesn't guarantee you a spot in the restaurant, but if availability does pop up or if they happen to have some at the time, then the restaurant will contact you and let you know you're in. Now, another thing that might surprise or maybe even shock guests is that the food courts don't stay open all day. So here we're talking about cabanas and Marceline Market. You're never going to be strapped for food on a Disney cruise, but you will need to be mindful of when food is available, just so that you don't miss out on a meal that you've been amping yourself up for all day. Several of your breakfasts and lunches will more than likely come from your cruise ship's food court. Now, on the Magic, Dream, Fantasy, and Wonder, it's Cabanas, and for the Wish and probably the Treasure, it's going to be Marceline Market. Both food courts will offer up a full breakfast spread. We're talking waffles, sausage, eggs benedict, the works, up until 10.45 a.m. And certain rotational dining rooms will also have breakfast offerings, too, in a more sit-down, casual-style format, which tends to be a lot less hectic to navigate in the mornings. But it could take you a little bit longer. After breakfast, the food courts will switch into lunch mode and have an even wider variety of foods to choose from, meaning there's a little something for everyone. But around 3 p.m., these food courts will shut down. Note that on some of the longer cruises, the food halls have been known to reopen in the evenings and offer an alternative table service dinner instead of your scheduled rotational dining offering. But that's not always a guarantee. You can learn about what times each of the restaurants will be open during the course of your cruise by checking out your daily schedule via the Disney Cruise Line Navigator app, which will not only have all the restaurants updated hours, but also updated menus for you to browse through too. If your family needs a quick bite to eat before dinner after 3 p.m., then you're going to have two options. You can either pick up food at one of the food courts near the pool, or you can order room service, which is free to use and available 24-7. For a full room service menu, just check your Navigator app and bonus surprise for you, you might not see it on the menu, but you can totally order Mickey premium bars to be sent to your room too, any time of day. How's that for a sweet afternoon snack? 
Now, surprise, this is some brand new news that you might want to know about. You can use magic bands on some ships. Now, nope, we're not inside the Disney parks, but that's not stopping Disney parks technology from invading the cruise line. Recently, Disney Cruise Line started to introduce Magic Band Plus to the Disney Wish, and even more recently than that, they announced they'd be coming to the Disney Fantasy starting on July 29th, too. Now, they call this Disney Band, not Magic Band, so just a heads up on that. But you can use your Magic Band Plus that you use for the parks on the cruise line. So these bands can link up to your Disney Cruise Line account so you can unlock your stateroom, pay for purchases, download photo pass pictures, and trigger some fun little interactive moments on board the ship as well. Kids can also use Magic Bands to access the Oceaneer Club and scan into Scuttle's Cove water play area on Castaway Key. But here's what you really need to remember if you're gonna go the Magic Band route. Don't abandon your Key to the World cards. Key to the World cards are distributed outside your stateroom, usually above each stateroom's number, when you get on the ship. While these cards do essentially everything that your Magic Band can do, you still have to have them when you're getting on and off the ship at any port of call. So let me repeat that. You have to have your key card with you to get on and off the ship, even if you purchase a Magic Band Plus or a Disney Band or whatever they're calling it. Now, will this change in the future? Maybe, but for the time being, every single person in your group will still need to have their key card close by at all times. If you already own a Magic Band Plus from that past Disney World or Disneyland park trip, like I said, then you can use that same Magic Band Plus during your cruise too. If you don't have one, you can order one for your cruise by visiting My Reservations on the DCL website between 11 and 45 days before your sale date, just as long as your reservation is paid in full. Again, it's just on the wish and the fantasy at the moment, but it'll probably expand to the rest pretty soon. And heads up, my friends, if you got little kids, Nurseries cost extra. Yep, kids, teens, and tweens clubs are free aboard the ship, but childcare for your baby is not. If you and your partner are looking to enjoy the evening together alone, gazing into each other's eyes over steak and wine or something, then you can take your baby, who falls between the ages of six months to three years, to the It's a Small World nursery on board the ships. Not only will you need to pay $9 per hour and $8 per hour for every additional kid on top of that for your baby to chill out here for a while, but you'll also need to reserve your spot in the nursery too. And yes, the nursery books up just as quickly as a mixology class, so it's best to snag your reservation as soon as you can. Parents are required to provide their own diapers, baby wipes, extra clothing and pajamas, pre-made bottles of milk and formula, baby food in jars, sippy cups, and security items like blankets, passies, and favorite toys or loveys. And everything should be labeled with the child's name, just like any daycare or childcare facility you'd use back home. If you find having a romantic date night is hard to accomplish when you're thinking about your kid's well-being every few minutes, then you'll be happy to know that the nursery counselors do use the chat feature in the Navigator app to communicate any needs or problems that might arise while your kid's chilling in small world. So you don't have to stress about continuously going back to check in on him once you've dropped him off. And just like that, you are three steps ahead of your Disney Cruise vacation. Ain't nothing gonna shock you now. Oh yeah, there's still the matter of packing for your cruise. Gotta do that, so don't forget to head to DisneyFoodBlog.com slash cruise packing if you want a free downloadable checklist to follow along with while you prep your suitcase for sailing. Oh, oh, and one more thing. If you want even more help planning your Disney cruise getaway, I highly recommend reaching out to our friends over at Small World Vacations. Not only are their travel agency services both professional and friendly, but they'll also help you find the best savings. And get this, they're totally free to use too. I'll link their info down in the description for you because I have a feeling that once you use them, you'll never want to solely plan a Disney vacation by yourself again. They're that good. Thanks for listening, everyone, and thanks for watching. As always, this is AJ for Disney Food Vlog, and we'll see you real soon.